Hi and welcome to The Honest Channel. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to discover how to age well and look and feel good for longer and to share that with you. And for those viewers who, like me, tend to find the darker, colder days of late autumn and winter a little tougher going, then this video is for you. Because with the weather taking a cooler turn on this side of the planet anyway, I'm already making changes to both my skincare and wellness routines to try to stay vibrant, strong and energised over the coming months. A reminder, you can find more advice and information around ageing well on my website, honest.scot. But now, let's take those steps to a winter of wellness. So if you find making the transition from warmer weather to winter difficult, spare a thought for your skin. Plunging temperatures, harsh winds and the drying effects of indoor heating can really put our skin through its paces. Left to its own devices, my skin definitely reacts negatively to the cold and I end up with dryness, redness and irritation. So that's why I've made a couple of changes in recent weeks. One thing that doesn't change year round is my use of sunscreen. It's always the final step in my morning routine to protect my face and neck because UV rays don't take a break in winter and are still the primary cause of damage to your skin cells, known as photoaging. But in spring and summer months, I'll just apply a little vitamin C serum in the morning for some added environmental protection, followed by a peptide serum before finishing with my Blue Lean sunscreen that doubles up as a moisturizer. But in winter, I add another step, which is to add a couple of drops of oil to my sunscreen in the morning and to my moisturizer at night. Now, I'm often asked in the comments, and so I'll include it in the description, the skincare products I use in my day-to-day -day routine. So I will link to a recent video on that here as well. In previous years, I've used Augustinus Bader's highly expensive but very nourishing face oil, opting for the smaller size at 70 pounds or 93 US dollars for just 10 milliliters. This year, however, I'm trying out True Botanicals Pure Radiance Oil. It's priced at a hefty £90 or $110 for 30 milliliters, but that's considerably less than the Augustinus Bader Oil, and a little of this really goes a long way. So I just add one or two drops to my sunscreen for an added moisture boost in the morning, and again at night to my Callosum Multi Action Cream. And by doing that, I'm just keeping my skin extra hydrated, and protected. And the good news is the True Botanicals oil is a high performer. It's non-comedogenic, so it won't clog your pores, which is an issue for me with oil. And it's naturally very rich in everything we want in winter. Ceramides, omega-3 fatty acids, and antioxidants. So taken with it am I that I've swapped out my cherished Geek and Gorgeous Vitamin C Serum and through winter I'll be using the True Botanicals Chebula Active Serum. It's $90 for 30 milliliters, but again I'm just using a couple of drops at a time in the morning and at night and I have very clear skin at the moment, free from bumps and with very minimized pores and I'm putting that down to this serum. So the chebula berries are very high in antioxidants with an even higher antioxidant capacity than acai berries. So this serum is high in both vitamin C and E, which work even better together. And I've not had to wait to see an impact on my skin. That was obvious within just a couple of weeks. So those are the two changes I've made to my skincare routine. And skipping back to the face oils and those all important omega-3s, there are good quality, lower cost face oils around that will do a similar job to the likes of the Augustinus Bader and True Botanical products. So protecting your skin this winter needn't cost the earth. This Holy Grail oil from Pharmacy, for example, has an impressive list of nutrient rich ingredients and plenty of omega threes to boot. It's 44 pounds or $48 for 30 milliliters, which should see you through winter if used sparingly and mixed with your regular moisturizer. And talking of omega-3 fatty acids, my optometrist recently advised me to take omega-3 fish oil to help my dry eye condition, with the theory being that it improves the quality of your tears to help relieve dryness. In the same way, upping your intake of oily fish in winter and or using a supplement can also be helpful for your skin, with a 2018 review from researchers in Taiwan concluding that fatty acids in fish oil can improve skin barrier function, inhibit UV-induced inflammation and hyperpigmentation, improve skin dryness, and accelerate wound healing. Omega-3 fatty acids could also reduce the production of inflammatory compounds that contribute to the aging process, and taking a supplement is a cost-effective way of harnessing the benefits 
if you don't eat a lot of fish. I also take a vitamin D supplement. I actually take vitamin D year round, but I slightly increase my intake in winter. So the government advice in the UK is for people to take a daily supplement containing 10 micrograms of vitamin D equivalent to 400 international units or IUs a day. In the US, the National Institutes of Health says the average non-deficient adult should aim for 600 IUs per day in their diet. But that advice is aimed at preventing a deficiency in vitamin D, which can lead to all sorts of health problems. It's not designed to help you achieve optimal levels. During the pandemic, multiple studies equated lower levels of vitamin D with poorer outcomes for patients. So much so, there were calls for basic foods like milk and bread to be fortified with it. A global group of scientists who came together to advocate for vitamin D supplementation recommended taking higher levels of vitamin D than currently recommended by health officials at 4,000 IUs daily. That's 100 micrograms, so 10 times the minimum recommended UK dose. Now, the National Health Service in the UK warns that excessive levels of vitamin D could be harmful, as we heard just recently from Dr. Brad Stanfield on this channel. And they advise not to exceed more than 4,000 IUs a day. So that amount is regarded to be the highest dose within safer parameters. Now, I've found that supplementing with higher doses of vitamin D in winter generally means I don't suffer from seasonal affective disorder anymore, which used to absolutely thump me come January each year. Despite sitting in front of a light box, I still got it really bad and it affected everything from my mood to my energy levels to even the way I looked. You could see it in my face and the heaviness around my eyes. So what I tend to do with dozing now is just play it by ear. So I take a vitamin D3 capsule with K2 and magnesium from Do Not Age. You want to make sure your vitamin supplement contains D3. That's the form that ensures that calcium is absorbed easily. And taking vitamin K2 alongside it helps activate the protein osteocalcin, which integrates calcium into our bones. So that's why you often see the two together. The Do Not Age supplement contains 5,000 IUs of vitamin D3, so that's the higher end of the spectrum, but I take one every other day and find it's enough to get me through winter in good shape. And if I start to dip a bit in the peak of winter, I can always up uh, my frequency to daily for a few days. And if the anti-inflammatory, immuno and bone supporting health benefits aren't enough, vitamin D also plays an important role in skin, protecting against inflammatory skin conditions like acne and psoriasis. It helps regulate the function of our skin cells, including the rate that they turn over and acts as an antioxidant, protecting against environmental and sun damage. And all this in turn protects against premature aging of our skin. So there is every reason to supplement in my view, especially in winter. But if you can, it's always a good idea to discuss supplementation with a medical professional, particularly if you have any health conditions. I mentioned my excellent optometrist earlier, and I had also spoken to him recently about how my near vision has suddenly got poorer, one of the many joys of midlife. And he explained he always sees an influx of patients at this time of year complaining of poorer near vision because of the change in light, which makes it harder to see close up. So that did make me feel a lot better that I wasn't alone there. Now, I wear contact lenses, but if I need new eyeglasses, I usually order them online to save on cost and to get a bigger choice. And I've been using these Peepers reading glasses recently, which I love because they have such a huge choice of fun designs. And that makes you feel better about wearing reading specs because sometimes you can feel a right fuddy-duddy putting on spectacles when you're trying to read a menu in a restaurant and so having a patterned cheerful pair just makes the whole thing a lot easier. And I like that you can try them on virtually before making your choice so you can see what suits you and avoid ending up looking like Dame Edna Everidge. Hello possums! Winter is also the time of year when we tend to want to hibernate and those evening walks can slip away because it's cold and dark as mine have been doing recently. But exercise as we age is crucial and sometimes we need to remind ourselves of that. So I'm going to do a video dedicated to this topic, but I would highly recommend this new book, Forever Strong by New York-based Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. She practices what she calls muscle-centric medicine, and that's because both through her own extensive experience and intensive research, she's come to the conclusion that muscle is the organ of longevity and that the loss of muscle is a trigger for a range of age-related diseases, 
including dementia. So this has rocket fueled my ambition to get strong. I'm increasing my protein intake and it is worth watching my interview with Dr. Brad Stanfield here who talks about recommended amounts. I'll link to it below as well for anybody listening on the podcast or who prefers to access links to the description. And I'll also link to Dr. Lyon's book and info on all the other things discussed in this video. But I'm making sure I prioritize protein with every meal and I've joined a gym, so I'm also working out. I went with my sons the other day and they both looked like a couple of gym pros while I looked close to collapse. But the main thing is I'm going, I'm following a strength building program that includes working out with weights, lots of squats and repetitions alongside a little cardio, and I've joined the yoga class. But there are so many exercises that you can do at home as well. So following Dr. Lyon on Instagram, I also follow Fit Mom of Seven. I'll link to them below. She's a personal trainer who demonstrates brilliant strength building exercises you can do at home. The nutritionist JJ Virgin is also really good on this. So exercising needn't be costly. My gym also has a sauna, which I can use as well. And I talked recently on the channel about the really strong health benefits of heat therapy from sauna use. I included a review in that video of an infrared sauna blanket that you can use at home if you can't get to a gym. And I will use my blanket at home in addition to using the sauna at the gym because frequency of use for 20 minutes or so at a time all adds to the health benefits. And winter is a perfect time to get heat into those muscles and bones. So that's another thing I'm building in to support my wellness. Finally, those darker nights and cloudier, colder days can definitely affect our mood. And that's why all of what I've just talked about can have a positive impact. And if you're like me and you find gloomier weather can cause you to feel gloomier, then exercise is the very best antidote. It's tempting to make winter a time of comfort eating and Netflix binging, but what if this year we make winter our time to get strong and invest in ourselves? It doesn't have to be expensive, but we will gain so much. So you could even use resistant bands in front of the TV at night and you can do squats and stretches as you're watching a show. I find the stronger I get, the more energized I feel and it feeds into my mood and how I feel about myself. So physical strength undoubtedly supports mental strength and it's never too late to start. My 80-year-old mum has just started squatting while holding a weight to help her build more muscle. She has kyphosis, which is a curvature of her spine with muscle loss. That means she can't walk far without support, but she can use a climber every day, and she's helping to limit the progression of her condition and relieve her back pain. And she's focused on getting stronger at 80, not weaker. And my dad's exactly the same. I have the two of them doing wall squats and all. They'll soon be running for cover when they hear me coming through their front door. But it is never too late, no matter your age, your weight, your income. These are all things we can do, whether it's using a resistance band in our chairs and lifting tin cans or going all out at the gym. Winter is a great time to start making this investment in our futures so we can hopefully stay active and mobile all our lives. That's got to be the goal, right? But that's it from me today. We've covered upping omega-3 oils in our skincare and in our diet, keeping up our vitamin D intake, supporting our vision, getting in a little heat therapy if we can, and crucially, building our muscle strength and fitness, all of which will keep us in great shape this winter. Let me know in the comments what you do to stay upbeat and in good health over winter. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell if you haven't already. And by doing that, you won't miss future videos and you can help the channel grow. And by liking this video, you also help it reach more people. Thank you so much for watching or listening and supporting this channel. And I'll see you next time.